Covering my name, Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. I promised you we would look at this from a biblical perspective. Iran moves its forces in a standoff with the U.S. coalition. Uh, this is something, uh, of course, that we did yesterday, and it's a much bigger picture than just uh, Iran moving their forces there or their militia forces. It's not the the actual full onslaught of an Iranian military confrontation there, uh, but it is the Iranian forces. And one of the articles that we were using the other day was the LebaneseForces.com, their own uh, website here, where they speak about Iranian militias moving closer to Al Tanf uh, near the uh, Syrian, Jordanian, Iraqi borders where they come together, where the US coalition, Norwegian special forces, British special forces, US special forces, all these different groups have converged here uh, to the to the uh, east of Damascus. Now, uh, just kind of giving you a little little look of the map of what's going on. As we had mentioned before, this whole area here, we're going to take a look here. As we know, Syria here, we have Iraq here. This is where the Norwegian forces entered in Jordan. We had the U.S. British forces here, but some of them have already entered into Syria there. We have Dada and Al Suede over in this region here, southern part of Lebanon, and we have U.S. forces staged in a massive military buildup there. Don't forget, we have our good friend Lorenzo on Already Happened that had first shown the uh, the uh, one of the uh, Roro ships that came down, ported in Beirut, Lebanon, brought in a lot of military, and as we mentioned, the U.S. generals were meeting there back in February. Uh, February 27th, in fact, to get with the uh, Lebanon president on bringing in military equipment for the overspill of the Syrian war. Well, it looks more like preparing for an invasion to take down Damascus, uh, myself. And also, Lorenzo brought out how that through the Suez Canal, they came up and, and, and followed right up here to the port uh, 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 Jordanian port here in the Gulf of Aqaba. That is what I believe supplied all the military hardware that made it up here uh, to the south there, just south of Damascus. Now, uh, the article right here, uh, one of the many articles that we used the other day, the uh, LebaneseForces.com, they were speaking not only about the fact of the the militias moving out there, the Iranian militias getting in position there. They were also speaking about how that the forces that were struck by the U.S. was actually Hezbollah fighters, another arch enemy of Israel. Of course, Iran is an arch enemy of Israel as well. Uh, used to not be so in the past there, and that was another article that we shared there, the exiled uh, prince of Iran who is stating clearly that they could reestablish great relations with Israel once again. And it's obvious that these, the, the I-24 News that brought this out is setting a stage that they want to be able to take down Iran's current leadership and replace it with a new leadership that would be more conducive uh, with relations with Israel. And no doubt that would be a great thing to see them all get along. But you have to remember, a lot of times leaders of nations don't have necessarily the best interests of the people at heart. It could be more than what we're dealing with as a new world order. I don't think that's something that the, the, the Father of Heaven is really interested in as far as a new world order. All right, but let's take a really serious look, though, at what's going on biblically speaking here. Uh, and right here, we're going to go through the book of Zephaniah. I'm going to kind of hit some highlights here, but we see here that God is already saying, uh, gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired, before the decree bring forth, before the day passes a chap, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. Seek ye the Lord, all you meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment, seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be you shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. For Gaza shall be forsaken, Ashkelon a desolation. They shall drive out Ashdod at noonday, and Ekron shall be rooted up. I think there's some very powerful information right in this area here. Ekron is something of a great interest. Ekron and Gath also kind of, although they're different uh, localities, are very close to one another. But it seems that Ekron has something to do with, of course, Gath being from Goliath, the giants. Uh, maybe there's some uprooting of some of these giants in the area there. 
that could be going on as part of these uh, judgments and wars that are going to be happening here uh, that, are, that are about to come about. Gaza shall be forsaken. That's an interesting one, and that is something that biblically is about to be fulfilled. Remember, under President Jimmy Carter and other presidents since then have been a little bit more favorable towards Hamas, uh, the, the uh, organization inside of Gaza, which many consider that to be a terrorist organization, uh, and, and it's kind of interesting, even their name in Hebrew is just not a good name to be having. But anyway, Trump, Hamas, Hezbollah are terrorist organizations. They're definitely about to be forsaken as far as President Trump is concerned. And of course, they continually lob rockets over into Israel. Now, I know there's a lot of other groups that speak about the atrocities that Israel commits against uh, the, the residents of Gaza, but it's always tit for tat. And Israel says if Gaza would stip, quit stop firing in the rockets, they could have a more normal relationship with the residents of Gaza. But clearly, the biblical prophecy is Gaza will be forsaken. And in the uh, article, Arut Shiva, President Trump slams Islamic terror groups in first speech abroad since inauguration expressed hope for regional efforts against terrorism. And uh, let's just quickly listen to what he had to say about this himself. I would like to thank King Solomon for his extraordinary words and the magnificent kingdom of Saudi Arabia for hosting today's summit. Actually, I didn't know I wanted to have that actually on the right position of where he speaks about this, so we'll just stop it right there. President Donald Trump made his first public address abroad since taking office in January, on January 20th, speaking Sunday in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia to condemn radical Islam terror and call for a united front in the region against terrorism. The president called the war on terrorism a struggle against barbaric criminals and criticized his predecessor, President Obama, and others for not acknowledging the threat posed specifically by radical Islam. This is not a battle between different faiths, different sects, or different civilizations, Trump said. This is a battle between barbaric criminals who seek to obliterate human life and decent people, all in the name of religion. People want to protect life and want to protect their religion. This is a battle between good and evil, he states. This means honestly confronting crisis of Islamic extremism and Islamist and Islamic terror of all kinds, President Trump added. All right, but then as you go on down here, uh, he mentions in here, during his speech, the president singled out the Hamas and Hezbollah terror organizations, listing them alongside ISIS and Al-Qaeda as the greatest purveyors of terrorism. So when we begin to look at Zephaniah, for Gaza shall be forsaken and Ashkelon a desolation, they shall drive out Ashdod at noonday and Akron shall be rooted up. Well, Gaza seems like it's definitely in line for being brought down. Woe to the inhabitants of the seacoast, the nation of the uh, Kithrites. The word of the Lord is against you, O Canaan, the land of the Philistines. I will even destroy thee. There shall be no inhabitant. We are talking about something that looks like it's going to get completely out of control here in the Middle East, especially when you begin to examine the book of Zephaniah. Now, besides Trump speaking there against uh, Gaza there, let's take a look at another prophecy going down a little bit further here. Uh, we'll back up to verse 7. And the coast shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah. They shall feed there upon the houses of Ashkelon. They shall they lie down in the evening for the Lord their God shall visit them and turn away their captivity. I think that's important to note as well because at the time that the whole Middle East will embrawl in, in violence, once we see that Gaza is taking down, and you're going to find out not only Gaza, Assyria, Nineveh, Jordan, and even the West Bank is going to be embroiled in all of this fighting here. Uh, and, and in some cases, like in the case of Assyria, Nineveh, and Jordan, they will become desolate. Okay, And at the same time, it seems to be the time that God will visit the children of Israel and turn away their captivity. So it seems to set a stage as well. Verse 8 states, I have heard the reproach of Moab and the revelings of the children of Ammon, whereby they have reproached my people and magnified themselves against their border. Now, the Moabites and the chief of Ammon, none other than, as you can see here, the Jordanian map here, notice this as well. If you ever go back and research uh, the, uh, the British mandate, all the land that you see encompassed right now of Jordan 
and all of modern day Israel was supposed to be given for a Jewish homeland after the, uh, after the war of uh, First World War, 1917, when the war toppled the Ottoman Empire, that's what that was to be given. The French mandate is what created the country of Syria and Lebanon, these places, these regions here. But what's interesting is the children of Ammon and the children of Moab, which are the Palestinians right here, these were the children in biblical times, the children of Lot, that were God had always told the children of Israel, let them alone, let them to live in peace. But the problem is, is they keep fighting, as the prophecy says, over Israel coming back to their homeland. And of course, in the West Bank, and Jordan is the one that, uh, back there in the Independence War, that took all of this region here. And I know there's a lot of dispute over there. There's a lot of people. Even there are Jews that, are, that side with the Palestinians. There's those that side with the, 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 the Jewish people only. And I realize there's tit for tat. I think it should be one state. They should live in peace together, side by side. I don't believe that you should just oust the Palestinians. But then again, the Palestinians cannot expect to just go in there and go on terror rampages either. But this is not what the prophecy is speaking about. We have to kind of back up to that prophecy. I've heard the reproach of Moab and the revelings of the children of Ammon, whereby they have reproached my people and magnified themselves against their border. So it's a border issue, just like Daniel 11. We find out that they divide the land by the way, which is the earth, the Adama, for gain. And that's what they've done to that entire region. Since World War I, they divided all that land for gain and still dividing up Israel, carving it up for new possibilities all the time. Now, we also see, too, PLO source denies a boss plans to propose large land swap deal during Trump's visit. Just the other day, there was a big article that came out that a boss was going to give 6.5% or 6.9% land swap with the Israelis. Well, now all of a sudden, that's not going to happen, according to one source on the inside of this. Palestinian Liberation Organization, PLO, close to the Negotiation Affairs Department, vehemently denied allegations made on Saturday, which stated that Palestine President Mahmoud Abbas was planning on a proposing a deal that would give up 6.5% of the Palestinian lands in negotiations during U.S. President Donald Trump's upcoming visit on Tuesday, which is already in the past. But... Again, that is denied, uh, that this will not actually happen. Again, what does it say? Because what? They have magnified themselves against their border. This is exactly what we see going on. And also remember the White House on their own website. What did they have there? They cut the Golan off. This, was, this is actually part of the land swap that no one's telling anybody about. The Golan is what's going to be given to the Palestinians in order for the Jewish people to be able to keep certain of the settlements that are inside of Judea and Samaria. All right, it doesn't end there though. We're gonna to get to what's going on and what we were reporting on yesterday. Let's move down to verses eight and nine. Uh, we actually just did verse 8, I apologize. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, surely Moab shall be as Sodom and the children of Ammon as Gomorrah, even the breeding of needles and salt pits and a perpetual desolation. The residue of my people shall spoil them and the remnant of my people shall possess them. Possesses them. Now, this is what's fascinating in this. Now, notice, they become a desolation. What becomes a desolation? None other than Moab, the West Bank, and the chiefs of Ammon. Jordan becomes a desolation. Now, notice, though, Israel is actually, they win a battle, but it's only a remnant of them. Now, how can a remnant be? Now, this could have two different ways this could go. It could be because Israel has come back as a remnant of a people in modern days, or is it because, be, because of the war that will be taking place with Syria, with the Jordanian country backing that war, is that what's going to cause uh, this desolation of Jordan? Is it going to cause the desolation of the Gaza? Is it going to cause Israel to be weakened down militarily? As that one friend of mine that sent me the email that believes that Israel is being used by the United States to draw their forces out into the battlefield, take a heavy beating, maybe Russia gets involved in this, to weaken them down in order for what? None other than 
to see that uh, Israel would be willing to do with whatever uh, the United Nations wants to do. Now, I don't know if that's the case or not, but the point is, is in the prophecy there, we are clearly seeing that what we're finding out that, that Moab uh, uh, and the children of Ammon shall be as Sodom and Gomorrah. They're going to be just desolated by a battle. Okay, so now, as we stated before, you got to keep in mind, what's going to cause this battle? Well, it so looks like a war with, a, with uh, Syria. Assad accuses Jordan of planning Syrian invasion, according to the Middle East Monitor. And it's not only that, though. We also have war of words escalate between Jordan and Iran. This is on the almonitor.com. Why are they having a war of words? Because Jordan is getting involved with Syria. They're allowing the United States and the British forces to get involved. So it's going to end up being a bloodbath between them all. And not only is Am, uh, the children of Ammon or modern day Jordan and the West Bank uh, Palestinians going to take a severe beating in this particular war, but it's going to get even worse. Let's drop on down. Ye, uh, verse 12, ye Ethiopians also, you shall be slain by my sword and he will, will stretch out his hand against the north and destroy Assyria and will make Nineveh a desolation and dry like a wilderness. Assyria, modern day Syria. Now, the reason it mentions Assyria is because let me just pull this map down just a little bit so we can see this a little bit better. We'll back out, actually. It would be better to show the whole region there. The, the ancient empire of Assyria actually went into what we call modern-day Iraq, encompassed all this. Mosul, by the way, here on your map, Mosul, this is part of Nineveh. This is the, the city of Mosul, the ancient city of Nineveh, lays right there in Mosul. And of course, that's part of the Assyrian Empire. And we already know that what's going over there, the U.S. coalition is taking down Nineveh. They're just devastating this particular city. And of course, Syria is going to be finished off. We know Isaiah 17, Damascus falls as well. The fortress of Ephraim falls. So that means the Christians that were believers, uh, the Jewish believers of many 2,000 years ago, their, their whole empire here collapses as of a massive war that actually ensues in this whole area there. So moving on into this again, uh, as we see there, Assyria and Nineveh, they become a desolation just like Ammon, because why? Jordan gets involved in this as well. Mosul, victory in sight at a cost, according to the latest CNN article that just came out, a little boy in a yellow jacket runs and jumps uh, alternatively waving and whipping the dust off his face, wiping the dust off his face. In his right hand is a strip of white cloth intended to show he and his family are civilians. His parents are exhausted and weary, having left their home in the West Mosul's uh, Mushari neighborhood. But the, but the little boy can barely contain his excitement. Behind him, struggling against a dusty uh, headwind, stretches a line of dozens of people, their heads bent down, trudging up a dirt track. Teenage boy in a red track suit carries a bundle on his head. You know, everybody's fleeing. Everybody's fleeing. You, don't want, you want to know why? Let me show you some other prophecies. In the book of Nahum, and I've been sharing this now here with you guys on Israeli News Live. We're going to share this as well on, uh, on our new satellite television program coming up, which, by the way, even though it does air across the United States, it also airs worldwide. We'll be sharing with you the details tomorrow here on Israeli News Live, how you can watch that. You can watch Israeli News Live on uh, satellite television, but you can also watch it worldwide. Share that with you tomorrow on here on Israeli News Live. Anyway, getting right back to this. So, But Nineveh is old like a pool of water. Chapter 2, book of Nahum, verse 8. Yet they shall flee away, stand, stand, shall they cry, but none shall look back. Take ye the spoil of silver, take the spoil of gold, for there is no end of store and glory out of the pleasant furniture. This happened when ISIS first came into Mosul, overtook the city, stole all of the, the treasures, they stole the money, the U.S. Obama left them plenty of military hardware there, tanks and everything else for them to be able to use in their fight against Syria. And of course, many of them went to Syrian battle as well, but there was many that stayed back and looted the entire town. These things ended up on eBay and everything else. Prophecy was being fulfilled. We shared that with you on Israeli News Live. And then again, in chapter 3, this is where we're at right now with, with, with uh, Nineveh. And it shall come to pass that they that took 
that look upon thee shall flee from thee and say, Nineveh is laid waste. Now watch that, watch this. And it shall come to pass that all they that look upon thee shall flee from thee. That's ISIS itself. The very group that came in there and destroyed it in chapter 2. Now they look upon you and say, Nineveh is laid waste. Who will bemoan her? When shall I seek comforters for thee? And they flee as well. Art thou better than Populus? No, was the, <laughs> that was situ uh, situate among the rivers that had the waters round about it, whose rampart was the sea and her walls was from the sea. Ethiopia and Egypt were her strength and it was infinite, but Lubin were thy helpers. It's just totally gone down. Everything being destroyed. The whole Middle East turning upside down with these wars that are going on. And it doesn't seem like there's any hope in sight. Oh my gosh. Guys, I, I just hate to be the bearer of bad news. I hate to see these things come in the way they are. We know it's prophetically spoken there, you know. But always remember too. Remember the, the Hezekiah when he, the prophet Elijah came and told him it was thus called Amar Yahuwah. It's thus saith the Lord that he was going to die. But when he turned his head to the wall and wept bitterly for God to spare his life, the, the, the Father God giving 15 more years, giving time to get his life in order uh, and to, to serve out, to try to serve the Lord. And that's exactly what God did. So it doesn't mean necessarily that when things are prophesied that this could not turn around if the people would only repent. Uh, and it just doesn't, it's not looking in that, that particular uh, direction there. Anyway, if the, if the work that we do here is a blessing to you, please consider supporting the work here with Israeli News Live and Danun Institute. Also, Rise Up Children of God, my wife's YouTube channel. We'll place all three of those links in the description below. Uh, as well as our website, you can go to IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can donate there to be a part of keeping this broadcast going. And as well, if you would like to, uh, you can also look on Israeli News Live. Be sure you're on Israeli News Live YouTube. We have a donation uh, link right there above the subscribe button in our channel. Thank you for supporting and God bless you. Shalom.